Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Abu Ghorab Solar Temple Thousands of years ago, the solar temple at Abu Ghorab was a majestic place of worship used by the ancient Egyptians to give praise to the sun god Ra. Most historians believe it was built in the 5th dynasty of the Old Kingdom, 2400 BC, and was once a truly magnificent place to behold. Although, unfortunately, the years have not been kind to the solar temple. Today it lies in ruins on the west bank of the Nile, not far from the Great Pyramid between Giza and Saqqara. In its prime, the solar temple consisted of a massive courtyard, numerous smaller structures that may have housed priests, and the temple itself. The temple had to be accessed through a covered ramp nearly 300 feet long. At the very center of the temple's courtyard was a thick obelisk estimated at over 110 feet tall, covered completely in limestone. It would have been a sight to behold. So, what's the big mystery? According to alien astronaut enthusiasts, the temple acted as a stargate. It was from this place where the ancient Egyptians contacted deities and beings from other parts of the universe. It may sound absurd, but that's what some of the experts are saying. The temple wasn't just a place to worship the sun god. It was a place where Egyptians believed they could contact other beings through an unknown ancient technology. What do you think? Do you think that's true? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Vardahus Fortress Vardo is considered the oldest town in northern Norway. It was first settled in the 1330s when legendary King Hakon Magnusson built the Fardohus Fort to defend the eastern border. These days, the town is still there, and so is the fortress. The fort is one of the most northerly ancient military fortifications in the world. It's a hugely impressive structure built in the Middle Ages as a way for Norway to defend its sovereignty from Sweden and the Republic of Novgorod. It was one of the many fortresses built throughout the medieval days to combat potential invaders spilling into Norway around the Barents Sea. The fortress itself is an amazing piece of history, but there is something else that happened in Vardo that you might be interested to hear about. It was here in this remote village that one of the biggest witch trials in Scandinavian history took place. Thirty women were accused of sorcery and put on trial in the winter of 1662. Rumors spread throughout the town that the women had made pacts with the devil. One ended up being sentenced to a medieval prison camp, two women were tortured to death, and eighteen were burned alive. Oh my gosh. This wasn't even the first witch trial in Vardo. About 140 witch trials took place here between 1601 and 1692. It just so happened that the biggest one was in 1662, capping off nearly a century of frantic witch hunting in northern Norway. Number 8. Notre Dame Cathedral As you may know, the Cathedral of Notre Dame caught fire in 2019, nearly burning the entire structure to the ground. The world watched helplessly as almost 1,000 years of Parisian history went up in smoke. Luckily, the fire was put out before it could do any major damage, but there was still enough destruction that extensive restoration work had to take place immediately. During the restoration work, a mystery was uncovered hidden beneath the cathedral, one that shocked scientists around the world. Before we get to the mystery, let's take a look at some facts about Notre Dame Cathedral. Construction started all the way back in 1163, during the rule of King Louis VII, but it wasn't completed until 1345. It took almost 200 years for the Grand Cathedral to be built, which is pretty surprising, considering it only took the Egyptians about 20 years to build the pyramids. Notre Dame is one of the best examples of French Gothic architecture on the planet, and it's dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It survived war, revolution, and it's even supposedly home to the crown of thorns worn by Jesus at his crucifixion. Now it's time for the mystery. During excavations at the cathedral in 2022, scientists found a pair of lead sarcophagi. The mysterious skeletons were buried beneath the foundation, and they had been there for at least 300 years. We don't know who these men are, only that one of them had gout, aka the king's disease. That means he ate really well and probably a lot. And now for number 7, 
But first, I want to give a big shout out to Summer Rain and Niwoldic72. Hope I said that right. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family, because why not? Number 7. The Pyramid of the Moon The Pyramid of the Moon in Mexico is just as perplexing as the Great Pyramid in Giza, just a little younger. It was built around 2,000 years ago when a mysterious civilization in Mexico began to build the city of Teotihuacan. Construction started around 300 BC. The city was home to about 125,000 people, making it the sixth largest city in the world at the time. Arizona State University archaeologist Robert Cowgill says it was the largest city in the Western Hemisphere prior to the 1400s making it far more impressive than anything in South America or Central America. But there's more to this pyramid than meets the eye. Sure, it dominates the landscape at 142 feet tall, but it's what's underneath that has researchers so intrigued. There's a secret passage beneath the pyramid where archaeologists have found mysterious green stones, the skeletons of people with elongated skulls, and what appeared to be offerings left at the sacred core of ancient Teotihuacan. The creepy tunnel runs directly underneath the pyramid and likely served as a metaphorical passage to the underworld. Humans may have been sacrificed in the pit to appease the gods of death, but it's not clear what else was happening here. It took a lot of work to carve such a passage below the pyramid, so it must have been very important. Number 6. The Maya Crocodile City the ancient Maya city of Nishtun Chi'ich dates back about 2,500 years. It's one of America's earliest examples of a city designed with a simplistic grid layout. That means its streets and avenues were laid out in a grid, just like our modern cities are. It was home to thousands of people, located at the edge of Lake Peten Itza in Guatemala. Although most people have never heard of it, Nishchun Chi'ich was the most dominant settlement in the region during the age of the Maya. The Maya dominated much of Mesoamerica for a very long period of time. For 3,000 years, they ruled southeastern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, and their kingdom stretched all the way into Honduras. The Maya came up with the first truly developed writing system in ancient America, as well as some of the most sophisticated architectural and artistic styles. They even had their own astronomical system and advanced calendars. But there's one thing about this city that scientists can't quite figure out. Prudence Rice, a professor from Southern Illinois University, says this city may have been designed specifically to look like a crocodile from above. She says this city was clearly planned so that its urban core was gridded, but the city as a whole may have been modeled after a crocodile. From the sky, the outline of Nishtun Chi'ich resembles a reptile's scaly back. Scientists can figure out if the Maya did it on purpose, or if their city looking just like a crocodile was a lucky fluke. I think it was on purpose. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Hemet Maze Stone In California, there is a mysterious ancient petroglyph in the shape of an ancient swastika. It can be found just outside the town of Hemet, and was originally discovered by a rancher in 1914. He was surveying his property when he came across a boulder with an image carved on its face. The image looked like a maze and appeared to be extremely old. The rancher did a bit of digging around the stone and found artifacts estimated at 500 years old, maybe even older. Over a century later, modern archaeologists still don't know who made the carving or what it was for. The biggest part of the mystery is the maze-like design. It's extremely different from other petroglyphs found in the United States. Most petroglyphs left behind by Native Americans were representations of people and animals, rivers, and other natural features of the world around them. The carving on the Hemet stone is almost esoteric, an elaborate maze in the shape of a swastika. The swastika, although we associate it now with the Nazi regime of World War II Germany, was originally found in Buddhist tradition. Swastikas can be found in Buddhist architecture all across Asia. It makes no sense that a Buddhist symbol would have been drawn by Native Americans. And for this reason, the stone has spawned a lot of conspiracy theories. Some say a crew of Chinese sailors was shipwrecked in California 1,500 years ago, leaving behind nothing but a symbol of their faith on a rock. 
Number 4. Orongo Village Easter Island, also called Rapa Nui, is a tiny island in the Pacific Ocean famous for its hundreds of mysterious statues. The coastlines of the island are dotted with moai, the huge statues that are very famous. And while the statues are the main focus of Easter Island, and most certainly its main attraction, there is a lesser-known site here hiding a secret. It's called Orongo Village, and was once the ceremonial center of the cultic people of the island. Orongo was the home of the Tangata Manu, or the Birdman cult. These were the people who seceded the Moai culture who built all the statues. It was here where the chiefs and most important people of the ancient tribes on the island lived seasonally. Once a year, there would be a grand religious celebration in honor of the creator, called Makemake. Unfortunately, the city didn't last very long. At the end of the 19th century, most of the original Rapa Nui culture had either died or converted to Christianity. The few surviving members of the Birdman cult became fewer and fewer until the whole thing collapsed and the ceremonial village was abandoned. Orongo is now a ruin sitting next to a lagoon at the edge of the island, home to the crumbling stone houses where the ancient chieftains once lived. Number 3. Los Guachimontones Los Guachimontones, located in Mexico just outside the city of Guadalajara, is one of the most impressive and mysterious archaeological sites in Mexico. Did you know? The site is known for its curious round pyramid structures. It was built by the Teuchitlan culture, first discovered in 1969 by American archaeologist Phil Weigand. It wasn't until 1996 that excavations began, and even then, nobody really understood the details of the site. Rumors started to spread that the pyramids had been created by aliens, causing a rush of tourists to the area. But alas, researchers soon proved the pyramids were constructed 2,000 years ago by human hands. Sorry to disappoint. The Teuchitlan culture thrived in the Tequila Valley starting in 300 BC, then vanished around 900 AD. There were a lot fewer people here than in the city of Teotihuacan to the south, and their architecture was different. The pyramids uncovered at Los Guachimontones are unlike any other pyramids in the world. The largest of the pyramids is 60 feet tall and has 52 steps leading to its top. It's known as the Conical Step Pyramid. The pyramids in the lost city were made like circular staircases leading to a small platform at the top. The pyramids weren't used as burials, they weren't temples for sacrifices. The truth is that archaeologists don't know what they were used for. Some have speculated a post was placed in a hole at the summit and used for bizarre acrobatic ceremonies. That'd be fun to imagine. Before we move on to number two, want some more discoveries? Stick around to watch an earlier video about incredible archaeological discoveries that you might have missed. Number two, the Temple of Apollo. The Temple of Apollo was built around the 5th century BC deep in the Arcadian mountains of Greece. It was dedicated to, well, Apollo, who was to the Greeks the god of sun and healing. The Greeks believed it was Apollo who protected them from things like plagues and invasions. In 174 AD, the ancient chronicler Pausanias wrote that the Temple of Apollo was designed by the very same architect who created the Parthenon in Athens. We know this was a major ceremonial center for the Greeks 2,500 years ago, but what happened to it is a bit of a mystery. The temple was at some point abandoned and then forgotten for an estimated 1,700 years. Nobody even knew it was hidden away in the mountains until the 18th century, when it became a point of interest for scholars and artists alike. Because of its isolation, it was largely left alone by looters. It was found in miraculous condition and is still an excellent example of Doric and Corinthian architectural styles. And you'll know what that is if you studied art history. Number 1. The Dwarf Houses Covering southern Russia are thousands of ancient megalithic structures that were built in the Bronze Age. These structures are called dolmens or ispun by the locals. Ispun translates roughly to houses of dwarves. Dolmens were used as burial structures for about 2,000 years during the Bronze Age, maybe a little longer. Each one was built almost identical to the next, consisting of a chamber built from stone blocks stacked together to make a square. Four vertical blocks with a roof stone placed on top to keep them from falling over. 
They look a lot like rock houses, but nobody is completely sure what they were used for. Scientists have always assumed they were used as burial tombs, but that might not be the full truth of it. Researchers in the Western Caucasus say the dolmens may have had two uses. They may have been sites of tribal worship. Primitive humans could have used the dwarf houses as places to give praise to some unknown deities or to small magical beings they believed lived among them. Some experts have guessed it was only later that the dolmens were turned into burial chambers. Which of these amazing archaeological wonders did you find the most fascinating? Let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and stick around for some extra archaeological discoveries. Number 8. The Indonesian Lost Temple A long-lost pyramid-like structure was recently found in Indonesia, and experts believe it could be the remains of an ancient temple that had been hidden beneath the soil, undisturbed for thousands and thousands of years. The hidden temple is located on top of Mount Padang in West Java, and it was found buried beneath yet another archaeological site that was discovered in the 1800s. The original site is nothing more than a few stone pillars sticking out of the ground. It wasn't until recently that a huge subterranean structure was found with help from Andang Bakhtiar, a geologist from Indonesia who led the drilling and soil analysis. Even though the structure appears to resemble a pyramid, it's probably closer to a unique temple. It hasn't actually been dug up yet, but researchers have managed to use X-ray tomography and 3D imaging to discover different layers of the temple, which appears to have been built over millennia, with new layers being built on top of old ones. It's currently estimated to be around 3,500 years old. As for what the temple was used for, researchers aren't really sure. What we do know is that the local people in the region still visit the top of the hill where the structure is buried for prayer and meditation and this behavior could have been passed down over the past few thousand years, ever since the original temple was buried. Number 7. The Ring of Brodgar The Ring of Brodgar is one of the most mysterious and yet unknown Neolithic sites in Scotland. The ring was built in a true circle about 341 feet wide, and originally consisted of at least 60 giant stone megaliths. Today, there are only 27 of these stones still standing. The stones are slightly smaller than those found at Stonehenge, measuring between 7 and 15 feet, but there are more of them and they make up a larger area. What's really interesting is that no excavations have been done inside the circle, and there hasn't been any scientific dating to figure out exactly when the stones were erected. The true age remains a mystery, though according to the official heritage of the Orkney Islands where the monolith stands, it could have been built around 2000 BC making it much younger than Stonehenge. The Ring of Brodgar is the third largest stone circle in all of Britain and is technically classed as a henge. The circle sits inside a natural cauldron formed by the surrounding hills and was probably part of a large prehistoric ritual site that consisted of other nearby monoliths, such as the Ring of Bukan and the Stones of Stennis. It was basically part of a giant religious compound of various stone monoliths. However, because no excavations have been done and the relics have been studied so little, professional archaeologists are still unsure what kind of religious rituals were held here. And now for number 6, but first, it's shoutout time! Want to say a big thank you to KT Amazing and Kenny McCormick. You guys are awesome! Be sure to subscribe to Origins Explained and join the family! Number 6. The City in Rock Naqsh e Rostam, also known as the City in Rock, is one of the most spectacular ancient sites containing the remains of Persian kings dating back thousands of years. The city itself is cut directly into a rock cliff, dating back to the Achaemenid dynasty of between 550 and 330 BC. This was at the peak of the Persian Empire before they were defeated by Alexander the Great. There are four huge tombs carved into the rock here designed for royalty. While this archaeological site has been mostly ignored thanks to the nearby ancient capital of Persepolis, it's a treasure trove of artwork from the Achaemenid Empire during the 4th and 5th century BC and the Sasanians in the 3rd century AD. It was also a major ceremonial center until the 7th century AD. The tombs here once held the remains of the old Achaemenid rulers. Only one of the tombs has been properly identified as containing the late Persian king Darius I, the third ruler of the empire. The others most likely belong to his successors, Xerxes I, Artaxerxes I, and Darius II. 
but this is based only on the layout. There are no inscriptions and so far no additional evidence. The facade of the tombs contains images of kings and triumphs, as well as battles and acts of worship. Some of the reliefs were carved over pre-existing carvings, although some figures still come through, like a portrait of a man with a pointed hat and strange clothing. This indicates that this place was once used by an earlier civilization that predated the Achaemenid Empire. The site is also the location of a mighty necropolis, which researchers believe once held the ever-burning flame of the empire. While the tombs were looted and desecrated following the invasion of Alexander the Great, there is much left to be discovered here. Number 5. The Summer Palace The Summer Palace is one of the most fascinating places in all of China. It's located near Beijing and is the best preserved imperial garden anywhere on Earth, and is the largest of its kind still standing in China. The palace is 268 years old and is filled with gardens, temples, and ancient pavilions. The palace was originally designed to achieve harmony with nature. Of course, it was also made for the imperial family as a summer retreat from the stuffy walls of the Forbidden City. The Summer Palace was commissioned in 1750 by Emperor Chiang Long of the Qing Dynasty. It was destroyed by the French in 1860 and rebuilt six years later. It was destroyed again in 1900 by the Allied forces of the Eight Powers, then rebuilt once more 12 years later. Its final rebuilding was one of the final acts made by the Qing Dynasty. What's really interesting about the Summer Palace is that it's one of those archaeological sites that has never been out of use. Ever since it was originally built, it has been occupied and used. It may have been destroyed twice, but it was rebuilt each time bigger and more impressive. It currently holds a small trove of artifacts brought together from all over China. Depending on who you ask, a visit to the Summer Palace is even more amazing than a trip to see the Great Wall. What do you think? Palace or wall? Which one would you want to visit? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Archaim Archaim is one of the most fascinating and mysterious archaeological sites in all of Russia. It's located in the southern Ural region near a small village. The site itself consists of a major fortified settlement that was probably used in the Middle Bronze Age, around 4,000 years ago. The stronghold housed at least 2,500 inhabitants in primitive dwellings. Researchers have found traces of cellars, hearths, wells, furnaces used for metallurgy, and other building materials. Each of the dwellings was built facing a street that thousands of years ago had been paved with wood. There were even drainage gutters for collecting rainwater and getting rid of waste. And to top it off, Archive had a massive courtyard in the center that was used for gatherings and festivals. But who lived here? Well, it was probably the earliest ancestors of the Iranians, a group of people who populated the Eurasian steppe in the 3rd millennium BC. It went undiscovered until 1987, even though the settlement had been photographed earlier in 1952 by aerial cartographers. A team of archaeologists led by a man named Genadiz Danovich investigated the region and found the remains. There have since been over 20 similar structures found in the southern Ural region. The area has since been named the Land of Towns. Of course, there isn't much left of the once great settlement. It would have once had walls and roofs and looked much like a fort with circular streets and smaller avenues. Now it's nothing but a scarred circle of grass in the middle of the barren countryside. Number 3. Go Chang Dolmen Site The Go Chang Dolmen Site is a prehistoric cemetery located in Korea and one of Korea's most spectacular ancient wonders. There are dozens of tombs found throughout the site that were constructed starting in the 7th century BC. The tombs are significantly more primitive than those found in Europe and normally consist of one massive rock slab balanced on two smaller stones, with a burial plot hidden underneath. These tombs were constructed by an ancient culture and are unlike any other Neolithic funerary monuments on Earth. At least 440 dolmens are located at the Gochang site. There have been jewels, stone tools, pottery pieces, and other artifacts excavated from around the dolmens. Unfortunately, not a lot is known about the Bronze Age cultures that lived on the Korean peninsula. These historical landmarks have only been investigated over the past few decades, and barely any human remains have been found. Until archaeologists do a lot more digging, we won't know how similar these ancient builders were with other cultures across the world from around the same time. Number 2. The Plain of Jars 
The Plain of Jars in Laos is an incredible archaeological site that not many people have heard of. There have been more than 90 different zones found in the region of the Plain of Jars, with at least 400 stone jars spread between them. These jars stand about 10 feet tall and are spread across forests, valleys, and hills. What's truly incredible about these mysterious jars, which were first discovered in the 1930s, is that they were used as coffins for dead people. Human remains were put inside of the jars and then buried. However, even after so many years of study, archaeologists can't say for sure exactly why this type of burial was practiced in ancient Laos or how they even got so many of these giant jars into the middle of nowhere. According to Life Science, the largest of all the jars found weighs 10 tons, making it hard to believe that these ancient people could have made it all by themselves. One of the most recent expeditions to the Plain of Jars revealed a skeleton buried inside of a shallow pit. The lead archaeologist on the case, Dougald O'Reilly from the Australian National University, said that the skeleton was found with a piece of stone covering his face and his eye sockets staring through the hole in the rock. However, they don't know exactly why the stranger was buried in such a bizarre way. To tell the truth, there is much we still don't know about the Plain of Jars. Number 1. The Polish Pyramids A group of massive tombs were recently discovered in Poland, and archaeologists have dubbed them the Polish Pyramids. That makes sense. At least a dozen of these huge tombs were discovered during a research project being carried out by professionals from the University of Szczecin. The ground structures discovered were built to resemble elongated triangles, like pyramids. The structures weren't that tall, only about 10 feet off the ground, but they were an outstanding 492 feet long. They have been buried by forest and brush, which made them very difficult for the archaeologists to study. So far, fragments of pottery have been discovered along with other miscellaneous artifacts. It's believed that the tombs were built sometime between the 5th and 3rd centuries BC by the Funnel Beaker culture. Those who are buried inside these tombs were likely elders of this ancient European tribe. Excavations are still ongoing, so there's probably a lot more yet to be found. There have, however, been experts claiming similarities between the mounds discovered in Poland and the ones found in other parts of England. Stonehenge and these Polish pyramids were also made around the same time, suggesting one of the cultures may have been influencing the other, and the ancient tribes in Europe may have had more contact than previously imagined. Thanks for watching! Which of these mysterious archaeological sites would you want to visit? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another amazing video. See you later. Bye.